Have you ever wondered if those tiny mobile soldering irons are any good? There are a few on the market that can be powered from a single LiPo battery, and they claim they can handle the needs of RC applications. But can they really? Well, today, we're gonna find out. We've never used any of these soldering irons before, and we have no prior experience with them. So we're gonna first check them out here in the studio, then we're gonna test their abilities, and then we'll determine, are they worth it? For our testing, we have three different irons that can all be powered with a LiPo battery, and they are the McLan SSI Series Simple Iron, the 1UP Racing TS100 Iron, and lastly, the Aeromax 12 Volt Pit Iron. All of these irons do not have a power supply and cannot be plugged into a normal wall socket. Instead, they operate between 12 volt and 24 volt DC power, which means they can be powered with a 3S, 4S, or 6S LiPo battery. For operating temperatures, these irons are very close, with the McLan offering up to 840 degrees Fahrenheit. The 1UP also offers up to 840 degrees Fahrenheit. And then lastly, the Aeromax offers up to 896 degrees Fahrenheit. Now let's open up these packages, starting with the McLan. It has a zippered protective case containing the instruction sheet, an Allen tool with extra screws, the iron stand with small cleaning sponge, the DC power cable with XT 60 connector, and lastly the soldering iron featuring a 3 millimeter wide chisel tip. With the 1UP racing iron, we also have a zippered protective case containing an XT60 to 4 millimeter bullet power adapter, the main DC power cable with an XT60, a wire stand, our soldering iron with a 4 millimeter wide beveled tip, a tube of solder, and an extra two millimeter wide beveled tip. Lastly, our Aeromax also starts with a zippered case, the instruction sheet, our aluminum stand base with large cleaning sponge, the hardware for the stand, rubber feet for the stand, a tube of solder, our main DC power cable with four millimeter bullets, our soldering iron with a five millimeter wide chisel tip, and lastly, our cap that's a part of the stand, but can also be screwed to the end of the iron. So if you use those included connectors and adapters, the McLan requires a LiPo with an XT60 connector. The 1UP requires a LiPo with an XT60 or a LiPo with 4mm bullets or a power supply with 4mm bullets. For the Aeromax, it requires a LiPo battery with 4mm bullets or a power supply with 4mm bullets. But beware of using a power supply to power one of these items because most power supplies only provide a constant 12 volts and no more. And 12 volts is the bare minimum to power one of these irons. If we want maximum power, which is up to 65 watts for each of these irons, well then we're gonna need to provide the irons with maximum power input just 24 volts. Now here's a power table from the McLan instruction manual, and it's pretty clear. Not only does the iron heat up faster with 24 volts, but it provides its maximum power there. And although the instruction manuals for the other irons don't say this, it's still true for them as well. So for our testing, we're not gonna bother using a three cell LiPo battery, which is only 12.6 volts when fully charged. Instead, we're just gonna go straight into using a four cell LiPo, which is 16, 0.8 volts when charged, and then we'll test a 6S LiPo, which is 25.2 volts when charged. And that's a little over our 20 volt limit, but it's close enough. So for our first 4S test, let's start real simple and just see how quickly these irons can heat up from cold to melt solder that has a melting point of 374 degrees Fahrenheit. To give us a benchmark of fast and slow heat up times, this is the Thermaltronics 9000S. It's a pro level lab grade soldering station and it heats up our solder in about 14 seconds from cold. This is an old Weller WLC100. It's cheap, it's beat up, and it's very slow. I imagine most RC guys have something like this that still technically works, but not very well. To melt solder, this old Weller needed over 70 seconds to heat up from cold. Now for the mobile irons. McLan is first, and what the heck? Why won't it work? After plugging in the battery, we have to hit button A to initiate the heat up process. That's normal, but it's not working. And after some intense caveman moments, I realized the McLan iron has a low voltage cutoff and it's set to 6S LiPo, which when we plugged in our 4S, looked like a really low drain 6S and it wouldn't work. So we set that LVC to 4S and boom, we're in business. 
And we were able to melt our solder in roughly 16 seconds. With the 1UP iron, it also melted solder in about 16 seconds. Lastly, the Aero Max was ready to melt solder in about 17 seconds. Still using the 4S battery, can the irons remove this 10 gauge wire from this motor? The 1UP iron did it, but just barely. We had to leave the iron on there way too long and everything got really hot. Next up is the Aero Max and it did it pretty easily. Lastly, we gave it all we could for the McLan iron, but it wouldn't melt that solder joint. We have all the same power as the other irons, but the McLan features the smallest tip, which is probably holding us back. Feeling uneasy about this, we grabbed one of our 10th scale race buggies equipped with 13 gauge motor wire, and the McLan took that no problem. I think it's safe to say that on 4S power, most of these irons can handle 12 to the 14 gauge wire applications. No problem. But what about using a 6S LiPo? With a fully charged 25.2 volt 6S battery, these were our heat times. From cold, our McLan was melting solder in about 10 seconds. The 1UP iron was melting solder in about 9 seconds. And the Aeromax was, oh crap, the Aeromax uses 4 millimeter bullets and that's not gonna work with our battery. At this point, there's only one reasonable thing to do here. We're gonna use one of our other soldering irons to solder on an XT60 plug. Since batteries always use the female end of the connector, we needed just the male end and luckily found one from some other wire lead and made it work. All soldering here was performed with the McLan soldering iron on 4S. Now, back to those heat times. For our last 6S heat up time test, the Aeromax soldering iron was able to melt the solder in about eight seconds. Now, how well will they handle a 10 gauge solder joint? With the McLan, it can do it. With the one up, it can do it. With the Aeromax, it can do it too. Now what about an eight gauge solder joint from a fifth scale motor? Well, with the McLan iron, it did it. It removed it, but not very well, and it took too long, making everything extremely hot. And this is one of the main issues with soldering, where people damage stuff. Because if you leave that hot iron on the solder joint for long enough, the heat gets absorbed by that electrical piece. The heat goes through the wires, it travels into the circuit board in the motor, into the circuit board into the ESC, and it can burn those up. With soldering, it's really important to get in and get out to minimize the heat spread. That's why with that big old Thermotronics lab grade soldering iron that we showed earlier is so expensive, but really robust because when you put the tip on the solder joint, it instantly melts it, minimizing the heat spread. And that's how we wanna solder. Now, to continue with our eight gauge wire test. Next up is the one up iron and it tried and tried and tried, but couldn't do it. Next is the Aeromax with its five millimeter wide tip and it does it. This fifth scale motor and this big eight gauge wire is not your typical RC application, but the fact that those irons could melt or come close to melting these big solder joints says a lot about the irons and also lets us know that they can handle everything below this eight gauge, 10 gauge, 12 gauge, 14 gauge. Shouldn't be a problem. Now, are they worth the money? That's the whole topic of this video. And after using them for a little bit and having a soldering iron that you could use anywhere powered by a LiPo definitely seems worth it. Some of our RC applications may have a stronger need for a mobile iron. Somebody may use this as their primary iron where others may use it as their secondary take with me iron. But each of these irons with their different tips have different specialties and they each have their pros and cons. Now with the McLan unit, it is the least expensive at $89.99, but its use of that small chisel tip seems a bit limiting for performance. Maybe if you swapped it out for this McLan four millimeter chisel tip, performance would increase. The LVC on the McLan also is set to 6S and you can change it, but it will always revert back to 6S with each use. With the one up unit, it is the most expensive at $114.99, but includes a second smaller tip and adapters to work with XT60 connectors or four millimeter bullets, making this iron the most flexible to power. Now the Aeromax iron sits in the middle with price at $98.99, but we found it to be the most effective with big solder joints. The included DC cable only accommodates four millimeter bullets and it's a two wire strong, which we found a little 
annoying to work with. Also, the tip doesn't have a click or a snap when you install it. It just kind of slides in. It was a worry at first, but in using the iron, we had no issues at all. And if you're curious how long one of these little 6S drone style batteries lasted with only 1300 milliamps, you can see here we tested for eight continuous minutes with the iron performing work. And on the cell checker after those eight minutes, you can see the cells drained a little bit, but when we put the battery back on the charger, charged it up, the charger only put about 100 milliamps out it back in the battery, which means this battery should last quite a while with one of those irons. And for the peace of mind, it's cool to connect a cell checker on here so you can visually see the cells drain. Guys, you can check out these soldering irons and everything else we talked about by checking out our links down below. And for more RC, check out these videos.